Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you how to make some paracord flowers. This is not an idea that's original to me, um, but I got the idea from a guy named Michael Fishlock on Facebook. He also has a YouTube channel now where he goes over some of his methods for creating things. He makes a lot of paracord sculptures and some really cool stuff. So we'll put a link to his channel down in the description. It's called Cord Art. Um, but today we're going to be making his flowers. And for the sake of alliteration, I'm going to be calling it Fishlock's Flowers. And we'll be making a marigold. So for this project, we're going to need three colors of paracord. Um, obviously green for a little bit of a stem. And then whatever colors you want for your flower. I'll be making a marigold with orange and goldenrod. This is actually solar orange and goldenrod. And then you'll also need a little bit of wire for the stem. Um, any craft wire is going to work. And then for tools, you'll need a, some pliers to, to bend that wire. And you'll also need a fid or two. If you only have one fid, you want a type 2 fid. Um, we need it small enough to fit inside of paracord. And with that, let's get started on our marigold. So to start off, we're going to make a karak mat with your main color of paracord. Um, this is very similar to like a Turk's head design, um, but it's just going to have four petals or four lobes to it. So we'll start off on one end. You only need about five feet of paracord for this. Maybe even less if you make it small. And we're going to start by making a loop. We want our standing end underneath. So our end that's right here, that's going underneath the rest of the cord. And we're going to make another loop right on top of that other one, or kind of down below it, but they're overlapping. And we want that end to go underneath that standing end. And for this last one, I'm going to grab the end of my cord here so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to weave it through these two loops. And so it's just a simple over the first one, under, over, and then under. So we'll pull that through. And so now we've got three petals. One, two, three. And for our last one, we're really not doing much. We're just following our cord through from the end. So we'll be following alongside this cord all the way through that knot. We'll just be tracing right alongside of it. And we never want it to cross this cord that it's following. So we'll do the same over and unders all the way through. So I'll, I'm going to put a fit on the end. You don't need a fit at this point, but it'll be a lot easier for you to see on camera if we have this silver end on it instead of just yellow that kind of gets lost in the knot. So to trace it through, this cord here goes over, and so we're going to follow that over, under, over, under, and we'll just pull the, the extra through before we go any farther. So at this point, you should have four petals like that. And so we're following alongside the right side of this cord. This is the one that we're working with up here. So we just want to keep it on the inside all the way through the knot. So to go a little bit farther, we're following this around. It's going over, under, over, under. So we're going to follow that with this fid to the inside. Over, under, over, under. If you want to skip ahead and see how this looks when we're all done with this doubling process, you can. And that might give you a clearer picture of what we're doing. You want to kind of keep all four petals the same size. I'm not doing a very good job of that here. That's a little bit better. So now we're going to go through the, the next time around here. So it's over, under, over, and under this one. Just keep on following the same side of that first chord. So 
so that should sit on this side here so we aren't crossing the cord that's next to it. And we're almost done with this, this step here. So we'll go through again, over, under, over, under. Most of our cords are doubled now. And we'll finish this off by just following it around that last loop. So now you have doubled cords all the way around. We want to triple those up. So we're gonna follow that cord around one more time, just where we left off here. Here's our first two cords. So we're gonna follow it alongside one more time to make a total of three wraps on each pedal, and then we'll catch you then with the next step. So when you're done, it should look about like this. Um, you don't have to make it this big. I made it bigger so you can see it better on camera, um, but now we need to tighten it down to not have quite as many gaps in between. So we want to keep a little bit of a tail end on this side. Um, we stopped right where we started, so on this one little point, you can see there's four across. We're actually going to tuck that end underneath to hide it. And then we're going to tighten the rest of this down. So you got to do that one layer by layer. If you don't understand what I mean yet, just watch through this next time lapse and we'll show you the end product. All right, so now this is tightened down a little bit more, but we still have some gaps. Now you're seeing it looks a lot neater. You just want to keep your layers right next to each other without much gap in between those. So I'm going to go through and tighten this down one more time to eliminate some of these bigger gaps here. And then after that's done, I'll show you how to add in the second color. All right, so that looks a lot better about what we want it to look like. Tightened down to, you know, smaller than your palm. So now we can add our second color in, which is in our case is the solar orange. It goes nicely with the marigold. So this is our original cord. It's a little bit longer now after we tighten it down. And we can just let that hang for now. But this one, our longer end of the cord, we want to cut off and add the orange onto it. So I'm going to flip it on the back side. This is the cord that we're ignoring for now. For this one, we want to splice it where we're not going to see it from the front of the flower. So this next cord is going to be coming over the front and then down through this hole right here. So we want to just hide our splice point right behind these three rows. So to do that, we want to cut it about right here. So we'll clip it, maybe a little bit extra long so that we have some paracord to melt. And then same with this end here. And get a frayed end to start with instead of an already melted end. And we just want to, so I have a little more slack to work with. I'm going to pull this farther out. But we're going to put it back to where it was. All right, so now holding both of these in the flame. I'm going to hold them in the flame until the outer sheath is melted. Otherwise, the middle cords are all that's going to fuse. You can kind of shape that with your fingers while it's still a little bit soft. And that looks good. So that's going to hide right behind there. We'll flip it back to the front side. Um, I'm only using about two feet of this orange, by the way. Um, but you can, you can leave it on the rest of your cord if you want. It'll just be more to feed through the knot. So now to continue on. Put it down through this hole right next to, next to it here. So that it sits like that. We're just going to continue around doing the same thing on every pedal. On this next one, I'm going to spin it a little bit. Go down through the next hole. 
we just get this little orange stripe on each side. Spin some more over the top and down through the hole until we get to our last petal down through the hole. On this side, again, we're just ignoring this cord, so you can clip that out of the way. And on the second time around, we're gonna come up over the top, but instead of going down through that hole again, we'll go through these layers. And we'll just keep on going around until we fill up those layers. So we're gonna have a total of three wraps for this color as well. there's our three wraps of that done. Um, if yours looks like mine and it's a little bit loose on the outside here, you can go through and tighten that down. I'll go ahead and do that. But then afterwards, we're going to clip both of these cords and move on to our second layer of the flower. All right, so that's tightened down a little bit. At this point, we can clip both of these ends on the back. And we're just gonna be melting those to the back side of our project. So you can just clip them pretty short, um, but not so short that they're gonna pull through your knots. We go. And as Michael Fishlock also points out, you can kind of hide these behind the stem once we get to that step. So now on to the second layer. So the second layer we're going to do in the same orange cord. And you could add a third color at this point or whatever you want to do. There's no set in stone right or wrong on this. For this one we're going to be doing the same knot uh, minus the orange, so our original yellow knot here. But we're only going to be doing it doubled instead of tripled. So there's only going to be two stripes instead of the three that you see in the yellow one. So to make it again, we'll just speed through it here. Again, if you want it slower, you can go ahead and watch Michael Fishlock's video as well. So here's what it should look like when it's tightened down. Very minimal gaps in there at all. Um, to end the, to cut off the ends, we can just cut both of them at the same time and melt them together. So that's gonna be layered right on top of our other one and it'll look like that. Before we move on to the stem, we're gonna put one more knot in the middle here and that'll be a diamond knot made in the goldenrod color. So we'll start the diamond knot by looping the middle across our fingers and then making a loop in this right side cord and flipping that over. And then Michael Fishlock did something that I'd never seen before for this knot, and it's really obvious, and I should have gotten it long before, but we're just gonna pull that cord up to make a little bit of a loop, like that. So now when we take that cord and go underneath, around, instead of weaving it through over, under, over, we can just stick it right through that loop. So much easier to explain. Hope that's easier for all of you. And to finish it up, we just take each cord, so this one right now, wrap it counterclockwise until we get past this cord going around our fingers, and bring it up through the middle of the knot. So that we are making kind of the same four lobes that we had for our knot with the mat. This one, same thing, I'm gonna lay this cord out of the way here. This bottom cord counterclockwise around that standing end to go up through the middle. And at this point you can take it off your fingers and make sure that those petals kind of fold upwards this direction and pull the ends gently. You should get a knot that looks something like that. We've got some loops that need to be tightened down yet, but to do that we just want one cord coming out the end of this. So what we'll do is cut one end, put a fresh end on it with the lighter. We want to melt this really good, kind of create a little bead of plastic on the end. So that looks ugly, but that's going to be on the inside of the knot. So now we're going to thread our extra cord through. You just want to find the loop that has the end that you just melted and pull that end up inside of the knot, like 
that. And now just go through and tighten all those loops down. So you want to follow this loop through, feed the excess through the knot. Until we come out the other side. You kind of want to hang on to your knot so that end doesn't slip out. Now we've got a huge loop at the top here. So we want to tighten that through all the rest of the way. The top loop, you can just kind of let that go inside the knot too. A couple more passes and we'll be done here. So again, this was not my idea. Um, this is a pretty clever way that Michael Fishlock had of turning a diamond knot into a nice looking stopper. So now we'll thread this other end of it onto the fid. This is going to go right down through the middle of our flower. So bringing that back in, we want to go through that small one first, and then through the large one, and pull all the cord through until it looks like that. I'd say that turned out really well. Now all we have to do is our stem, and that's where the craft wire will come in. This is a little bit of a, an atypical project. Um, we're using a little bit of glue and craft wire, and you can do this however in-depth you want, um, but we're gonna make our stem rigid. So we wanna put some wire inside of there. So we're gonna clip this down to a little bit longer than we want our stem to be. We'll take a length of wire, and we're going to thread that into our stem. Fold the end of our wire over so that it makes a nice blunt end that isn't going to cut through the paracord when we insert it into the end. So we'll clip that. Well, that was interesting. And you'll take that folded end and put it up through the bottom of the stem and hold on to those center strands. And what I'm going to do is try to push that a little bit farther so that it actually goes right up to that middle knot and we can kind of stick a bend in there when we bend our stem downwards so that it locks in there a little bit better. So it helps to get some kind of blunt object. I'm just going to use the fit here to push it the rest of the way. All right, now where that wire meets the knot, I'm just going to take the pliers and you know, just leave maybe a quarter of an inch and then bend it at 90 degrees, like that. So then when we slide it back through, we've got a stem that's pointing down. And if you want to put some super glue on there, just hide the knots right underneath it. We're going to leave that for now. And you might be thinking, why is our stem yellow? I was definitely wondering that while watching the cord art video on this. And what he actually does is we're going to thread a fid on the end of our stem and thread some green over the top of that. And that's why I want a type 2 fid because we need something a little bit smaller to go through the middle of that green cord. So with the green, you can go ahead and gut about a foot and a half of that cord, or however long your stem is, just to give it a little bit of extra. So that should be more than enough. You won't need any of that. Melt the end a little bit to keep it from fraying, but you don't want to do too much because you want that to be able to stretch around the fit. All right, so back to the stem itself. We've got a lot of fraying going on here, and our wire is a little bit too long. So at this point, I'm going to, after I make sure my stem is straight, because I kind of bent it earlier, 
Okay, I'm gonna clip that down a little bit farther. And then what I wanna do actually is take a little bit of those center strands out of that one too. And then I've got a little bit of now gutted paracord at the end of my stem. I find that easier to thread onto a fid than one stuffed with wire and inner strands. So you wanna stretch that cord tight. So make sure that your wire is pushed all the way up and your cord is stretched over it tightly. And then I'm gonna cut it just past where the wire is. So you can see where that transition is, maybe a quarter inch. And then I'll use that to melt down extra small to fit in my type two fit. So this takes some extra forming the end. Just be careful not to bring yourself. Then we can fit our type two fit. All right, so now back to our green. We can put that fit into paracord and it's still a pretty tight fit depending on the brand of paracord and brand of fit even, but it should fit and we just kind of have to shimmy it onto the end. So there is our finished fish lock flower, complete with its stem. If you want to know how to make some pretty cool leaves for this project, definitely check out his channel. It's called Cord Art. He has some awesome things on that channel. He makes some cool paracord sculptures that are way beyond my capability. But subscribe to his channel, give him some love, let him know we sent you over there. We'll put links to the supplies used in this video down in the description. So the materials like the paracord and wire and also the tools like the fids and things like that. So check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.